Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this quick tip, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to add text to speech in your scripts. So this could be handy if maybe you are running a automation task on your personal computer or on your work computer, maybe on a remote session where you're not really actually paying attention to the script itself because maybe it's long or maybe if you're running something on your own personal computer you want to do some stuff around the house and you don't really want to pay attention to when it's done but you kind of want to know right away when it's done um, this way you can go and see the results of the script or anything like that you can actually add a voice um, using the microsoft voices that are built in to windows and actually give you an alert or maybe you can even use this to make your scripts a bit more accessible um, for people that might have hard of seeing. Um, when they are running that script, maybe the text is too small or they might have some color blindness, which might cause them issues to read a console script or anything like that. So let's go ahead and let's actually get started. This one is not too, too long, but I'm going to show you guys a few little tricks that you can also do with it. So. The first thing that we're going to want to do here is let me actually just zoom in a little bit more here so you guys can actually see the code. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add type and we are going to add an assembly name here and we are going to add system dot speech. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our variable here. So I'm going to create it as uh, TTS, so text to speech, uh, but you can definitely put it as like speech, voice, anything like that, or any variable that you find that you can easily recognize afterwards. And we're going to create a new object here, and we're going to put the type name as system.speech.synthesis dot speech synthesi uh, synthesizer. I probably massacred that, I apologize. So now once we actually have that here, so if we actually just run these two lines of code right off the bat, we can actually right away see our text-to-speech variable or our TTS variable in this case here. And let's go ahead and let's just run that. We're going to see that the state is ready, rate is zero, volume is 100, and voice is the system.speech.synthesis.voiceinfo. Now, what that actually, that voice info is, we're going to see that in just a second here. So we can actually do a dot voice to get more details. And we're going to see that the current voice for mine is the Microsoft David desktop. Um, it is a male with the age of an adult um, with the English US. So it does give you some quite a bit of detail on the voice and this will be useful for a little bit later. And then you can of course change the rate and the volume as we saw the rate was zero. So the rate is the actual speed of which the voice will talk. Whereas zero is just the default rate. Um, and then we also have a volume, which 100% is just maximum or the default maximum, I should say. You can actually increase the voice from 100 and you could definitely lower it down as well. So let's go ahead and let's just actually speak something really quickly here. So we can do a TTS dot speak and here we can put in our string. So let's do a very good classic here. Let's do our hello world and let's go ahead and let's run hello it. world. So there's the voice. As you can see, it is our very robotic sounding Microsoft voices, but they have gotten better over the years for sure. And now what we can actually do is we can actually change this voice. So what's really cool is you can actually see all the voices that you have installed on your computer. So the way that I like to do it is I like to create a variable for this called installed voices. And we're going to make that equal to a for each. And we're going to open and close parentheses. We're going to say for each voice in uh, TTS dot get 
installed voices. And we're just going to close the parentheses here. And then we're going to do an open and close curly bracket. And then we're going to do uh, voice dot voice info. And then we're going to pipe that to a select uh, gender name culture uh, description. And what I actually like to add as well is the age here. So if we actually go ahead and we run this now, and then we go ahead and we looked at what is our installed voices, we are going to see that we actually have two voices. We have a male adult and we have a female adult. Now these are the standard ones that are installed. You can definitely install more on your computer. It's just the default um, Windows speech or Windows text to speech features that you can install uh, with your Windows operating system. Um, but what's good is to probably select a default that everyone will use. And what I actually like to do more is more specify a female or male. So let's actually see how we can first specify a voice and then we're going to go ahead and actually just do it by gender as well. So what we can actually do here is we can say, let's do a selected voice here. So selected voice is going to equal installed voices um, where name like, and let's just put some stars here, like Zira. So if we go ahead and we select that and we go into selected voice, we are going to see that we get the female adult voice, which is perfectly good. And let's go ahead and let's do the, now let's do our TTS here, dot uh, select voice. And then here you can do a selected voice. And we want to make sure that we do a dot name here. You want to specify the name of the voice and not the actual voice object. And then if we go ahead and we run this here. Hello, world. We can see that the voice has now changed to zero or an adult female. But another way that you can do this this way, it is a lot easier, especially if you don't know what voices are going to be installed on the computer. What I like to do is instead of going into the installed voices is you can simply do a TTS dot um, select voice by hints. And this will actually let you specify a string in here. And what's nice is you can actually do a lot of different things. The one that I mostly like to choose is either male or female here, and it will select based on gender. So if we select it by male, Hello world. We get a hello world spoken in a male voice. And then if we go female. Hello world. It will then go and find the female voice as well and play that sound. So what I would typically do it as, like I said, our example earlier was letting you know that a script is done. We can easily say the script is complete. Uh, please come check the results and we can play the script that. script is complete. Please come check the results. So you can easily have this play at the end of a script. Or again, maybe you want to speak your menu as we saw in the video last week where we made a console menu. Maybe you want to give an option to the user to enable text to speech. And if they enable the text to speech, it will display the text on the screen but also voice those options to you as well. So those are all things that you can easily do with this awesome text-to-speech feature. Now there is also another ability that you can do. And like I said, you can change the rate and change the volume. Um, so let's just go ahead and let's see that real quick here. So we can do volume here. Um, we can set that to let's say 55 and we can say TTS dot rate is let's put that to 20 and let's see what this sounds like the script is complete oh sorry Please come check the results and the rate is obviously can only be from minus 10 to uh to 10 
It is different in the next example that I'm going to show you guys. So let's put it at 10 and that will be extremely fast. So as you can see, we can really barely make out what she's saying. Um, so let's say minus five because minus 10 is extremely slow. The script is complete. So as you can see, Please minus five the results. is still very, very slow. Minus 10 is extremely slow. Um, so that is the default. Just you can put a string of text and it will read it off to you just fine. Now there is a other option in RTTS object, which is going to be speak. And you're going to see speak SSML. Now SSML is similar languages to your XML or your HTML languages. As soon as I kind of paste our thing in here, and it is actually a version of XML. It is, it even has the words XML in the code that I'm about to paste in here. I don't know this language very, very well, but I have found a pretty good example for us. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to copy this example here for us. I'm just going to explain it out. Um, and then if you guys want to see a video, maybe a little bit more on SSML, um, please let me know. and I can definitely uh, take a look at it and learn that for you guys and be able to make a video. Um, but I have learned it enough to create this little uh, speech here. Um, so it just kind of shows the different rates. Um, so the speech rates, you can go from 5% to 200%. Uh, you can also specify a plus. Um, it starts off the default is 100%. Um, if you do plus 100%, it will put it at 200%. And then you can also say minus 95%. That will put it at, at 5%. Uh, but it is a lot easier just putting the flat rate here. You can also change the pitch. You can also change the volume uh, with this. So we can see that we have our XML style layout here. So we have our speak object here, uh, which just kind of goes over kind of our XML top level um, block here. We say what language it is, what version it's using. And then we have this voice here. So we can see that the voice is going to be using English US. And we can see here that we are just using a P tag, which is very similar. Like I said, that's why I kind of said it's kind of like HTML and XML, but it does use really it, it is XML. But there is kind of some HTML style tags. It even has the HTML break tag if you wanted to put a break. Um, and then there's these P tags for the paragraphs. So here it's going to read it in the normal rate. Here it's going to be extremely fast. And here it's going to be slow. And you just dis distinguish that by prosody, and then you can do rate, pitch, volume, and there are a bunch of other things that you can do. Um, but like I said, this is just gonna be a very simple example. So let's go ahead and let's play this here. Normal rate, fast rate and low rate. So you're gonna notice that the normal rate was slow and that's because I modified the text to speech rate. So let's go ahead and let's delete all of this text here. And let's purely just create a new object. And then it's going to just speak that exactly how it should be with just the S. Normal rate. That's rate low rate. So as you can see, the normal rate just spoke as if it was normal. Fast rate was extremely fast. And then the low rate was was pretty slow. Um, as you can probably tell, as the sentence get longer, the low rate would be extremely slow. Um, and then again, like you saw, if you make any changes um, to the text to speech variables before the speak SSML, it will take that as well. Uh, so just be aware of if you do combine the two, be a little careful. Um, I think for majority of cases, I feel like just the first method where you just speak the text is probably going to be fine. Uh, but there might be times, especially because you can um, put emphasis on words using the SSML. So if you are making something purely for accessibility reasons, uh, the SSML is probably going to be your go-to thing. If you just want to make this for a personal reason 
of you want to let yourself know when a script is complete without having to constantly go back and check. You'll just get an audio cue. The dot speak is perfectly fine. And that is really how to add a text to speech to your scripts. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you liked what you saw, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.